Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming today. The stage was set. The Lincoln Auditorium in Idaho State House. A press conference called by the Lieutenant Governor. This idea of discriminating against and firing employees based on private and personal health decisions flies in the face of the principles of liberty and justice. But as the opening scene played out, the presser. No individual should be forced to do something against their conscience on a medical procedure. Exposed itself as more of a pep rally. Proper political theater. Does it go both ways for you? They're not asking, they're telling. Complete with perceived heroes. Well, Brian, I just think those are two completely separate issues. And villains. Do you think that uh, the men and women who run the healthcare systems in our state uh, perhaps know more about it than you do? All merely players. Well played. It's been a great conversation, and I don't know why we don't have more of this, so thank you. Thanks. Very liberal use of the word press conference this morning, a description I'm sure the group would appreciate. The point of today was for the lieutenant governor and guests to discuss the recent announcement that some private medical providers are going to require their employees to get the COVID-19 vaccine or get another job. That was the announcement made a week ago today by three of Idaho's major health care systems, St. Luke's, St. Alphonsus and Primary Health. Those companies say they're doing this to protect the patients and staff inside the facilities. A requirement, we're told, was inevitable, but it still struck a sour note for some. And after the remarks this morning from McGeehan and some of her guests, Joe Paris spoke with the lieutenant governor about her stance on vaccines and the decision made by area medical groups, like what Lieutenant Governor McGeehan would like to see in terms of action to address the issues she sees with private employers requiring a vaccine for employees to keep their job. I'm not going to even go there because that's not my role as I'm not a member of the legislature anymore, but I, I as a member of the executive branch of government, I, I can play a role and that's why I, we drafted up that letter and I did ask the governor yesterday if there's something that we could do together, you know, to, to try to resolve this so that we can listen to the concerns of the employers, especially those in the healthcare industry, but also respect the rights of the individual. I know uh, critics of yours have said that this is an example of you trying to reach into private business and say the government's going to reach in and regulate and stuff. Is that fair? Do you think this is something that you're trying to reach into private business and tell them how to do their job or is that a mischaracterization? That's a mischaracterization saying? because I'm a business owner myself. I'm an employer and I do not like the government telling me what I may or may not do to run my my company. And I but and I do, that's why I tried to draw the distinction between m what I view as being a mandate on a business by government and what I view as respecting the individual the choice and the autonomy autonomy of people and w what kind of medical decisions they choose to place on themselves. That, as an employer, that is none of my business. Do you think the word mandate's appropriate when, in the sense of no one's being forced to take a vaccine, but some people are being put in a position where they have to make a tough decision, get the vaccine or lose their job? It's, again, not a mandate, but do you think the word mandate's maybe overused here? I view that as a mandate because if they are not going to comply with getting the vaccination, they will be fired. Um, I know some of your supporters have said, you know, it's my body, it's my choice. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. And does that extend to other medical discussions? Absolutely. Like as, as an employer, absolutely. Now, I am also an individual and I have my own views on things like abortion and other things. So, but as an employer, it is not my job to interfere with those personal decisions of my employees. Do you think uh, this is a situation of a vocal minority being here today and speaking out, or from what you've seen, is it more than just a vocal minority as it's been described? I believe it's more than just a, mo a vocal minority. Uh, it's, this is growing across the state. It's a growing across the nation. And so I would just advise my my colleagues in the legislature and uh, other elected officials to heed the call. Do you have concerns about the vaccine rates in Idaho? Would you like to see them be higher? Well, I'm again leaving those decisions up to the individual. We've done everything we can to, res 
to help educate people. And I encourage people, if you want a vaccination, then get one. And I know that the vaccine has been a good thing for a lot of people. It's given people confidence to be able to go back out into the community. And I encourage that. But there also has to be a reason why still a majority of our population has not had it. It might be like myself, that I, I believe I already have the natural immunity, which is stronger than the vaccination. So there's probably a lot of that that's out there as well. And we need to respect that. A lot of the commentary around some of your comments is that you would support you know, government overreach or government telling private business what to do. Can you explain the difference between what you're doing here today in terms of, I guess, advocating and what, I guess, government overreach would actually be? But well. I think we just have a difference of opinion of what a go I don't view respecting the individual right of a person to make their own health care decision. I don't view that as being in conflict with or a government entity respecting that. I don't view that as being a mandate. All right, a couple of takeaways from just what we just heard, Joe. First thing, the natural immunity that she referred to, I guess maybe alluding that she did have COVID-19 at some point or maybe uh, was exposed to it at some point. I, I don't know what that clearly means, but there's really not a lot of evidence that says that those who get it would have more immunity than those that get the vaccine. That's still debatable. The other one, the vocal minority question that you asked her, she said at the beginning of that press conference, they had 405 emails and phone calls into her office about this. 405, that's not a whole lot. It's not a huge number. I don't think that is anyway, considering they had like more than a thousand when it comes to who they appointed to the CDH board for Ada County. Now, the question is when it comes to the FDA, okay, so say this thing is approved and gets that final approval, which could come by the end of this year. Does that change the tune at all? Yeah, I asked the lieutenant governor about that specifically, asking her, you know, if the vaccines, when they get their full FDA approval, if her stance would change. And she said, uh, simply put, no, but it's not because of the COVID vaccine specifically. She's against this in principle. She says that she doesn't believe that Idahoans or people should be going against their own will to go get any medical procedure or any medical treatment done. So to her, this wasn't necessarily specifically about COVID-19, but this was more about the sense that she doesn't want employers having to tell their employees you need to get a vaccine or lose your job. Uh, she thinks that uh, Idahoans have the right to their own personal medical choice. But it is interesting, Brian, because if you talk to other people that uh, were there today, I heard comments, people saying, well, I would reconsider my stance once the FDA approval is finalized. Some people are just waiting for that to go through the process, but it's two very different camps where you have one camp that says, I, I don't want to be told what to do ever. And you have one camp that says, I will take the vaccine, but I want to wait till it goes through the entire traditional full process. Um, again, it is important to note that the FDA process with the vaccines, uh, it, it did go quickly, but it's not like they were skipping steps. It's not like they were just pushing out a vaccine to get it out in time. Right. It was done quickly. We've spoken with Idaho medical experts for months about how that process went. And it is important to know that the vaccine has been tested and it is safe. And we are seeing very, very, very few accounts of adverse reactions. And so the next question, too, would be some of the data that was kind of thrown out there today. There was this reference to thousands of employees would be affected by this if these go through. But these are only three healthcare providers. And as you mentioned, we've already required the flu. They have already required the flu vaccine to work there in that capacity other than an exemption. But this hasn't come up before. And now all of a sudden it's an issue because of COVID. But the data she said thousands of people. We talked about this, right? St. Luke's 15,000 employees or so. They say 80% of their employees have been vaccinated. That's only about 300 or so that haven't. So if you add all those together, it doesn't seem like thousands of people affected by this. I guess you could say in the sense that it affects thousands of people in terms of saying that there are thousands of employees that could be faced with making this decision. And then of that pool, how many people would say, no, I, I would rather not take the vaccine and go work somewhere else. So if, if you look at it through that lens, I think you could say that it would affect thousands of people. But Brian, from what I understand, healthcare workers that we speak with, we're not sure this would affect thousands of people in terms of thousands of people will be losing their jobs in September. Okay. All right, Joe. Well,